very big challenge. It was Corona time. Everywhere is locked down. So I was just struggling with my wife. We don't have a job, so we're struggling, struggling, struggling until I could get a little job and everything starts better. back to the street Mike uh, you know we are always going on the street looking for stories and today is a very exciting one because I have a friend from Nigeria and we're gonna be sharing what happens in Nigeria bring it on our streets so get ready for this very wonderful episode and uh, you know I just look forward to having a conversation with somebody else I've been having a lot of videos with people from Uganda but today we're in the street of Nigeria you know I don't know where maybe Abuja maybe Lagos but we we'll find out so Keep watching, stay tuned. Thank you. Hey, my name is Ibrahim Kadri Abana. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. So, bro, yeah, bro, uh, tell me, how is life like growing up in Lagos, one of the Africa's biggest city? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I know a lot of, not only Africa, mm. the world, they heard about Lagos. Yeah, Lagos is very, then it was a very dangerous city, okay. the most dangerous city in the world. But now, I think everything is in control. Under control. There's the security, everything is under control now. There's no, like before, there is a lot of fighting from this area, the boys in this area, the gangsters here fighting each other. But everyone now, they calm down. Everyone is looking for money now. There's no more fighting in Lagos. There's a peace in Lagos. Very quiet area. Very good living in Lagos. So, what saved you from that life of gangster, from that life that, you know, that took so many lives in Lagos. What, what saved you from that? Uh, like I told you, I play football and you know everyone, they love football. Anyway, yes. you go, oh, this guy, this yeah. guy is not me. So yeah. everyone, they know me, like I played football in Lagos, in my area, the next area here, there. So all the gangsters, they know me, this gangster, <laughs> the other gangster, they know me. I'm like in the middleman, I'm friend to all of them. Yes. So I don't have any fight with them, any of this, any of that, any of this. I don't have any fight with them. We are all like friends. All like friends? Yeah, we are friends. I'm friends to them. So for a child watching you in Nigeria, yeah. who is struggling with decision, yeah. football saved you. Yeah. What other thing do you think can save a child in, uh, in Nigeria? Yeah, entertainment, yeah. football. Um, yeah, entertainment, football. Because when you are into this, yeah. you are playing football or entertainment, one of the two, you will be famous. And when people see you, they will like you. And you'll also be disciplined. Yeah, you also be disciplined. Yeah. Yes, bro. Uh, yeah. Abana. Yeah, bro. Yes. Uh, so tell us um, a little bit about your uh, your journey from Nigeria to Europe. Oh, my journey from Nigeria to Europe. You know, I got a student visa from Nigeria to Cyprus. And when I get to Cyprus, I go into school and working. And after a while, I couldn't be able to afford my school fees. And I stopped the school and I keep on working until I got to get across my woman and we get married. So you started from Nigeria to Cyprus? Yeah. Not to Denmark? No, to Cyprus. Okay, so you know, that is a, that's a long way though. Yeah, very long way, bro. Huh? Very long way, very long way, <laughs> very long way, bro. So you said you went to Cyprus, yeah. started studies, yeah. and then school fees happened? Yeah, and I study and I work in, but the work, you know, I earn a little, little, little payment. Money. Yeah, little yeah. payment. Yes. Yeah. So I couldn't be able to continue to pay my school fees and I stop yeah. my study. You know, in Africa, in Nigeria yeah. Yeah. in particular, yeah. 
everybody is struggling to finish school. Yeah. But you came to Europe, started school, school yeah. then you couldn't afford to pay, couldn't afford to pay then you yeah. jumped out, and now you're even living a better life. Yeah, yeah, even living a better life. Is there any secret you're telling a young man out there about school, yeah. especially in Nigeria? How, how, you, how do you manage to cope up without finishing your school here in Europe? Uh, I'm still tr trying, I'm still trying if I can continue my study. If I go in a little time, I will try to, to do that continue my study but you have a job right yeah i have a job i have a very nice job <laughs> yeah i'm very happy with my job very happy with that job yeah yeah very happy yes with that's my job. That, that's really good and um you know everyone aspire to be successful yeah but now here in europe you have seen so many things yeah a lot how has the experience you have had so far changed your life since you moved to denmark oh it's, it has changed my life a lot because when I came to Denmark, everything was so difficult. So I was just depressed, just thinking like, why did I move from Cyprus? Because that time it was Corona time, everywhere it was locked down. So the life was just like, you know, my brain was just crazy. So I was just thinking, why did I come to Cyprus? What is this? But after in a little cup of months, and I could be able to start building up myself and I get a nice walk. And I'm very happy now. Today I'm very happy, bro. I'm very happy. Surely. So much. Yeah, I'm very happy, bro. That, that, that's really great because, you know, when you move here, yeah. you have to make a big change. Yeah, big change, yeah. Now you're in Denmark. Yeah. What are you sharing back with the people home? Back with the people home? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, all I can say to them is that anything you're doing, just keep on doing it. Just keep on doing it with prayer. And God will lead you to your successful destination. Never give up. Never give up. Anything you're doing, doing it with all your heart, with all your power, all your strength, with prayer. And one day I know you're going to be there. Never give up. Never give up. One day you're going to be there, bro. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. But you're here on the street, Mike. Yes. We go around the world projecting voices like yeah. yours. Yeah. I know you are not the one qualified to ask this question. Yeah. But you're Nigerian. Yeah. Man, you guys seem to make it everywhere you go. Yeah. What's the secret, man? Hey, bro, there's no any secret, man. <laughs> Everyone, they all, they, everybody asks this question. All African, all my black guys, even the white guys, they say, Hey bro, where are you from? I say, I'm from Nigeria. I say, oh, you Nigerian guys, you are very fast. I say, it's not, it's not we, you know. Well, let me tell you something. Yes. When you are in a country that your government, they don't think about you. So your brain, it's rack every time. Your brain think very fast. Okay, yes. what I can do? But mm. your government, they don't give you support. They don't help you. Even our football, you can see how Nigeria football is not growing good so all the boys did like open their brain what can we do to make it? what can we do to make it since the government they are not giving help they are not doing nothing about us so we boys we have to work hard and we sure. think mm. very fast think very fast yeah think very fast bro you know nigerians are credited to a lot of success around the world yeah bro. you guys are building the world you know wherever you entertainment, are entertainment huh? doctor yeah Professor, yeah. anything you name, bro, Nigeria is the first. You are here in Denmark. Yeah, bro. Let's now think about the millions more in Nigeria. Yeah. What is that secret? Why are you able to make it in Europe, but make it less in Nigeria? Please, bro, you need to, you need to say something yeah, about this. Huh? Like I said, that anything <laughs> you're doing, you have to keep on doing it. With your heart, no, I, I, no, I, no, no, I agree with yeah, that. Because I work hard. I, no, no, I agree in with Nigeria, that. I work hard so much. And why are you not making it Nigeria? Why are you not making? Why are you not making Nigeria? Uh, but you are making so good in Europe and America. Yeah, like what I told you. Yes. The government here That's and it. the economy here. Yeah. It's very, very good. Very conducive. Yeah, Nigeria. very, very good. <laughs> very good. The economy here, like okay, for here, if you work an hour, yeah. you have like maybe twenty euro for one hour. Which is not up to Nigerian payment. That's a, that's a week in Nigeria. Yeah, that's maybe a month. <laughs> <laughs> so, bro, so when you get like, just for example, you are in Nigeria, you're doing a shit job and mm, you mm. got a little pen of money, and you go here, you just do a little job, not up to Nigeria. So it's like 
you will use all your power, all your brain to work very hard. And work very hard. Yeah, and work, earn more money. You know, I'm from East Africa. Yeah. And we want to be like like Nigerians. Yeah. We love East Africa. We don't really move out. Yeah. But we, we want more Nigerians in East Africa. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> other than moving to Europe. Yeah. So, as your journey coming to Europe, yeah. has it been worth it? Is it something that you would do it if you if you rethink that now you're in Denmark? Yeah. If you are still in Nigeria, would you still do it again? Is it worth you moving to, to Europe? Mm. No, bro. Would you stay in Nigeria now? If you now? didn't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, bro. I'm not staying in Nigeria. <laughs> Oh, we don't stay in Nigeria, bro. You stay in Nigeria. Yeah, we don't stay in Nigeria. We don't stay in Nigeria. Yes. So, uh, you know, uh, thank you so much for answering some of these questions. Yeah. So, I want you to, you know, to give certain words of encouragement, especially in building Nigeria. Like what you have seen from your work, you know, how you, you are handled, how things are. Give a little hope to the Nigerian and to the Africans back there at home. Yeah. My brother and sister back home, never give up. Anything you're doing, just keep on doing it with all your heart. Don't worry, you're going to be there one day. But I believe Africa is going to be the best in the world when the youth, they will take over the government. When the old one, they die, we're going to be the best. The youth, they're going to do the best. I believe this. He believes this. The youth is a center of belief. So every youth out there, there's a belief in you. Yeah. Never give up. Never give up the youth. Never give up. Thank keep you on so walking. Keep on walking hard. Thank you so much. We'll be back. I know you're going to take me to some of your favorite stores. You know, yeah. I know you like, you like shopping. Yeah, I like shopping a lot. Not what? only shopping. I like <laughs> expensive clothes. <laughs> Jewelries. Yes. I like expensive clothes because I work hard. Yes. So I want to live and put on good clothes. Bro, yeah. like this cloth, I bought it 500 chrome. Whoa. Very you're investing, big money. You're investing yourself. Yeah, this is like 5,000 chrome. This be begatin. Yeah, this Swiss. Swiss, Swiss word. So I work hard. I like putting on good clothes. Youth, work hard. And probably you're going to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Ah. Yes, Thank yes. you. Bombo. Bombo. So Rasta man, the kami respect of la beat, banga. I'm a shaggy How did you overcome the challenges you faced when you came to Denmark and now that you have a job and life is going better for you? Yeah, you know when I came to Denmark it was a very big terrible time, it was Corona time, everywhere is locked down, there is no job with my wife, no job, but I got a friend, he introduced me to a work and I doing it gradually, gradually until the Corona time is over and I be able to register my document because when the corona time immigration is locked down I cannot rec I cannot register my document so I was just walking through a friend he has a company so we're walking gradually gradually until the corona time is over and after everywhere is open and I can be able to register my document and got a job and with my wife also we got a job and now we thank God. So how life was like growing up in Nigeria? Oh, you know, growing up in Nigeria as a, let me say like a street boy. So then I was playing football and I was in um, high school. And you know, I believe that in this football, one day I'm going to play for Nigerian national team. That's my dream. But um, I play some club in Nigeria and I was, after my high school, I get into a polytechnic, but the football don't allow me to read my school very well. And along the line, 
I stopped the school. I focused on the football, playing football, until I got injury, and I stopped training. So did you like football? And how good were you in football? Oh, I love football so much. Even in Lagos, in Nigeria, like some cities, some people, they know me and I have a lot of colleagues, some of them in Spain, America, Germany, they travel that through football. So how is it like, you know, like in Nigeria, football is very popular. Oh, that's... And, uh, since it's very popular, everybody wants to play football out of 200 million Nigerians. Yeah. How are you able to make it, you know, just even in that level? How, how competitive is Nigerian football, you know, <laughs> league? You know, everyone knows that Nigeria, we crazy for football. All Nigeria, we have all football fans, all the youth. We love football so much. We love playing football. Not only football, all sports. Nigeria, we love sports, boxing, football. Anything exercise, we love it so much in Nigeria. So thank you so much, yeah, yeah. and uh, thank you for coming on the street, you're Mike. Welcome, you're welcome. Uh, we are very happy to, to have you, and we want to have some more conversation. Yeah. I want to visit your family. Yeah. We will be coming to your home, and uh, you know, be sharing moments with you. Yeah. So shout out to the One people. Love. Yeah. Here, and street Mike. Keep on watching. We're still coming home. Thank you so much for watching street Mike. You know, our guest from Lagos, Nigeria. Amazing, amazing, exciting episode. So, check on with Street Mike, check on with Connector mobile application. As you know, go to App Store, to Google Play Store, download Connector mobile application. If you want to download, if you want to book a bus, want to, to travel, you want school, anything that you want is on Connector. So, please check out with Connector mobile application. Till the next one, see you in the next episode.